Welcome to the webinar, How to Get Your Building Energy Project Funded, hosted by Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency in collaboration with World Resources Institute and various partners. The webinar is organized under the umbrella of Building Efficiency Accelerator. We are pleased to announce that, that 165 people have registered for this webinar, so everybody, welcome. My name is Aristides Tsakiris and I'm an academic employee at Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency. The center conducts research and advisory activities in the field of energy efficiency and serves as energy efficiency hub for the Sustainable Energy for All initiative. The center has an established network of global, regional and national partners with a broad range of stakeholders to help accelerate the implementation of energy efficiency activities. We also support Building Efficiency Accelerator with hosting different webinars from various partners. Now, I would like to briefly introduce the speakers of today's webinar. Uh, first is Sanon. Sanon is uh, the project coordinator for the Building Efficiency Initiative at World Resources Institutes within the WRI Ross Center for Sustainable Cities. Uh, and uh, Panama, who is the director of the Investor Confidence Project Europe. On a regular basis, the Building Efficiency Accelerator is conducting webinars and and all materials, including recordings and presentations from previous webinars, can be found on Copenhagen Center's Knowledge Management System. In the e-learning sector, we have a shortcut uh, for the Building Efficiency Accelerator webinar collection. The material of today's webinar will be uploaded there shortly. Finally, I would like to inform uh, that uh, you can send us your questions and we will do our best to answer as many as we can at the end of the presentations. Please do not forget to mention the name of the panelist that the question is. Now I would like to hand over to Shannon. Shannon, the floor is yours. Thanks, Pan Panama. Um, as Panama said, my name is Shannon Hilsey and I am with the Building Efficiency Initiative at the World Resources Institute. I'm happy you could all join us today for this webinar. And for those of you who may not have joined us previously or might not uh, be familiar, I'm going to provide a brief introduction to the Sustainable Energy for All Building Efficiency Accelerator, which is the partnership uh, coordinating this webinar. Sustainable Energy for All is a uh, United Nations initiative which was uh, initiated by Secretary General Ban Ki-moon in pursuit of achieving sustainable energy for all by 2030. And as part of that goal, one of the three objectives is a doubling of the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency worldwide by 2030. In pursuit of that objective, six sector-specific accelerators were created of which buildings is one, and the Building Efficiency Accelerator works to help cities around the world um, implement building efficiency policies and practices and overcome barriers to building efficiency. And for those of you on this webinar um, who are interested in learning how to finance a building efficiency project, you probably don't need an education on why building efficiency is important, but just to mention something from the BEA's perspective, we tend to focus on largely on emissions concerns, on the impact, on the large potential, on the fact that buildings' long lifespans can lock in high emissions and high energy costs for, for many years. But specifically as regards finance, one of the co-benefits we also focus on is the fact that um, energy efficiency is really a, a profitable venture and the studies have shown that every dollar spent on energy efficiency can help cities uh, avoid two dollars on average in investing in energy supply. So to help uh, cities and other stakeholders harness these co-benefits, the BEA uh, has a model where we identify certain actions, help convene stakeholders to identify the biggest barriers in a given market to building efficiency, and then provide solutions help cities overcome these barriers. 
Right now, the BEA consists of over 30 NGOs, associations, uh, service providers, and companies that are committed to providing expertise um, to cities that are interested in implementing building efficiency. Currently, the partnership consists of uh, 23 subnational jurisdictions from around the world, and each of the cities that the Building Efficiency Accelerator partners with commits to the pursuing and identifying one building efficiency policy, one demonstration project, and uh, a method of tracking progress toward that policy and project. And in response to those commitments, the cities receive assistance with anything from an action prioritization process with local stakeholders, various uh, tools for building efficiency, web-based and training, um, support identifying funding opportunities, and international recognition and uh, peer exchange around those goals. So far, uh, one pilot project that the Building Efficiency Accelerator has been especially working on is our uh, work in Mexico City. The city so far has passed an energy conservation code for buildings and is currently auditing several of its public buildings um, in preparation for public building retrofit. We are still welcoming new national and subnational partners, so if you are interested in getting more information on how to become a partner or um, what kinds of things being a partner entails, we'd love to hear from you at the uh, information on the screen or at buildingefficiencyinitiative.org uh, or at WRI's website as well as the SE for All website which is currently on your screen. So with that, um, I'd like to pass the um, presentation on to Panama. Great, thank you Shannon. Good morning, everybody. I am calling in from the uh, West Coast of the United States this morning, and uh, thank you for joining us all. This is uh, the session on how to get your building energy project funded. Um, Shannon just talked talk to you about the Building Efficiency Accelerator generally. We at the Investor Confidence Project, uh, we bring together the finance work group of the Building Efficiency Accelerator. And so we meet on a regular basis with uh, organizations such as ourselves to talk about ways that we can really help cities find ways to finance energy efficiency. Uh, we work in between investors, uh, project developers, and cities to be able to articulate exactly what it is each side needs in order to make the energy efficiency financing a picture clearer for everybody, but particularly providing resources for cities. Um, through that, we've talked to hundreds of investors that are invested in energy efficiency and done in-depth interviews on exactly what cities need to do in order to be able to attract energy efficiency finance. And just uh, not to give away the punchline before we get too deep into the presentation, but um, four major themes have come out of our conversations with uh, investors that are looking to invest in city energy efficiency projects that you can see up here on the screen. And the BEA Finance Work Group uh, will continue to be putting out resources, uh, guidebooks, and webinars such as this, um, focusing on exactly uh, these four topics over time and how cities can overcome these barriers and really help to communicate with uh, financial institutions to be able to get their funding. Today, we're focusing on the most project-related challenge that investors tell us they find, and that's the lack of project standardization. And so we'll get into the presentation right now. Uh, if you're on this call right now, you are interested in building energy efficiency, and you know that there is no better time to focus on this. Whether you are focused on it from a climate perspective, with buildings representing representing 40% of the global greenhouse gas emissions and about the same amount of energy consumption. Whether you're interested in this purely from an economic development perspective and the amazing opportunity that building efficiency provides to your city um, for job creation, for the renovations, or some other reason you're on this webinar because you believe that building renovation is important. Unfortunately, what we have is a situation where globally, um, even in the best energy efficiency renovation markets or building energy efficiency markets, only about 1% of building renovations um, are being carried out for energy efficiency. And in many markets, it's far below that. 
um, only about 5% uh, of new buildings are being built very efficient, even in the best markets. And so while there's a significant uh, need for building energy efficiency projects, there's unfortunately the potential is, is nowhere close to being recognized. And one of the biggest barriers we hear when we talk to project developers and cities about why they can't turn buildings into energy efficiency buildings or projects is a lack of investment. And this is shocking because energy efficiency should be one of the safest bets out there for investors. Energy efficiency returns um, work on a piece of uh, pieces of equipment and buildings that will be standing for a long time and the payback should be very reliable and should be exactly the kinds of investments and investors uh, should be looking at. More and more of them are being driven towards energy, towards environmental and social good type investments and energy efficiency should really be playing a sweet spot in there. And so we're seeing investors more and more start to look for ways to invest in energy efficiency. And in December of 2015 at uh, COP21 in Paris, you saw the largest collection of banks ever come together uh, and asking for energy efficiency to be dramatically upscaled so that they can, inv they can invest significant funds into it. We at the Investor Confidence Project see this ourselves. We have an investor network of over 35 investors um, all over the world who are seeking projects to invest in. Um, they represent a much smaller amount, only about four and a half billion, but that's four and a half billion dollars that they are looking to invest in energy efficiency projects and they cannot find projects in order to be able to deploy their investment. And at some point, investors will move on. We are at the best time ever right now for investment interest in energy efficiency. And if we do not capitalize on this moment of investor interest, they're going to start moving on to other areas of the clean energy economy that they would rather invest in. And so what you see up here on the screen is perhaps the most expensive PowerPoint slide you will ever see developed. Um, we've spent six years, um, spent over six million dollars, uh, conversations with over 200 investors, over 150 building ownership groups, and uh, just over 500 stakeholders around the world. We've developed a very simple slide that tells you exactly what we've heard from investors and what they're asking for in order to fund your building efficiency project. Quite simply, investors are demanding a much more transparent, consistent, and trustworthy projects if they're to be able to, if they're going to be willing to invest in your project. And I think it's summed up perhaps best by uh, this gentleman. Uh, Michael Eckhart. He's the Managing Director and Global Head of Finance and Sustainability at Citigroup. And he very, very clearly lays out um, the problems that he and other investors like him face when they're looking at building energy efficiency projects. And these are the kind of comments that lead us to defining trustworthiness, transparency, and consistency as key aspects as Michael lays out that the energy efficiency market right now is so disaggregated that they as investors can't find a way to invest. And this was very clearly laid out by the Energy Efficiency Financial Institutions Group. Uh, this group was put together by the European Commission and by the UN's uh, Environment Programs Financing Initiative. And this was the largest group of investors ever brought together to discuss energy efficiency. And they met for a year and a half, and in February of 2015, they released a report. And in that report, they talked about what are the top drivers for demand and supply of energy efficiency. And so what were the, the top areas that really bring about a demand for investment and really unleash the supply for investment? And any of us engaged in this marketplace can recognize some of what they found. High transaction costs increased investor confidence, the lack of a clear business case. But what was amazing is this group of 150 investors, the largest ever brought together in the world to talk about energy efficiency, they unanimously agreed on what the number one driver is of both demand and supply, and it was the same thing. It was standardization. Standardization 
is the number one driver for the demand for investment and the supply for investment for energy efficiency. And so what does that mean? Well, quite simply, what it means is, right now, investors don't understand energy efficiency. And the margins on energy efficiency projects are so low that they can't invest in the technical resources that are necessary in order to understand it on a project by project basis. And so what you see here is just a visual representation of exactly what we're talking about. You see a whole series of different standards and certifications and tools that are used in order to carry out building energy projects right now. And on the right side of the screen, you see three Class A office buildings all about to undergo a renovation. And so even though these three buildings are about to undergo an energy efficiency renovation, and you think an energy efficiency renovation is the same thing, what you have is three completely different pathways in order to reach that energy efficiency renovation. You have different professionals being used, different certifications being sought, different tools and standards being followed, so that at the end, even though the three buildings have been renovated to a similar level of energy reduction, they are completely different in the way that they've been developed and constructed and managed. And from an investor's perspective, this just doesn't work because this lack of standardization means that each time an investor is looking at a project, they're taking a large stack, usually of PDF and Excel sheets, and they're having to look through each one of those stacks of paperwork to be able to determine whether this is a safe bet for their investment. And as Mr. Eckhart said in an earlier slide, the margins on these energy efficiency projects are so small that the fees that investors have to pay their technical assistance resources in order to go through all of this documentation just make the investment not worth their time. And so when we talk to investors, they tell us this is the number one issue preventing them from investing in energy efficiency. And so what needs to be done, what we've been told by investors, is that cities really need to directly respond to this if they want to get their projects developed. And they need to develop a very clear, consistent, transparent, and trustworthy standardized mechanisms for implementing projects and attracting project finance. And if cities do this, they're going to reap a number of benefits. It's going to be cheaper to run their programs. It's going to be easier to train their own staff as well as contractors working within their jurisdiction. It's going to directly speak to investors by making the returns a lot more transparent for investors when they're looking at projects within those jurisdictions. And it's going to allow projects to be able to be aggregated into portfolios so that investors are going to be able to look at a city from a perspective of investing in many different projects rather than just one project. And all of these benefits and this approach in turn attracts capital to that city. And so here's what we've heard from um, um, all these investors when they've talked to us about exactly how cities should go about uh, delivering these sorts of frameworks. Uh, this, investors tell us that they're interested in information about the entirety of the building life cycle. They want to know how projects are developed, how they're going to be designed and constructed, how they're going to be operated and maintained, and how the results of the energy efficiency projects are going to be measured and verified. And so what they tell us is they're not so interested in necessarily having you choose one way to do it. But what they want is they want much more transparency into the types of standards, the types of professionals, and the types of management practices and measurement tools that are going to be used on the project. So it's not that they necessarily want to pick which one they use, but they want to know very clearly which one you are using and that is the best practice within your marketplace. And then on the consistency side, they say what they really need to have is they need to have projects documented and the project process documented in a consistent way. They want to be able to go into 
a project document set for a project and be able to turn to section two and section two always represents the same thing in that city for projects whether that be savings or design and construction and commissioning so that they're able to save time in their own review of projects when it's brought to them and so the transparency in how a project is developed and the consistency to how a project is documented for investors review are two of the most critical pieces when you're looking to get your project invested in attracting capital to your city and your project. And so in each of these areas, the investors are interested in the following pieces. And so for each one of the five different pieces of the building project life cycle across the top of the screen, they're interested in knowing the following details about each of those areas. So when you're baselining a project, they want to know what standard, what probably national standard are you using within your project in order to develop the baseline for that project. They want to know where the data is coming from that baseline, and they want to know the qualifications of the individual that's performing the baseline and what standard you're holding them to. They want to know the workflow process that that professional is going through to develop that baseline and they want to know what best practices are being used within your jurisdiction in order to carry out that baseline. And then lastly, what they want to see is they want to see that whole process documented in a consistent way in the project documentation set and the outcomes from that baselining really clearly outlined in a consistent way. And so for each one of these project lifecycle pieces, they're looking for the elements, the procedures, and the documentation to be listed out in the project documentation that then gets handed over to them as investors so that they can have a much more transparent and consistent view into the project's development. What investors also tell us is that there's a real need to understand where they are coming from and what their process is for financing and how the energy efficiency project development process can in turn help them and reduce their costs so they can reduce costs and make it easier to invest in a city. And so when we look at the five different areas of building energy efficiency, what we need to do is we need to think about how those align in turn with the development of a financing package. And so the baselining and the savings calculation for a project is absolutely critical for an investor to be able to develop all of the pre-financing work that's necessary into developing their risk analysis to know whether or not they're investing in a good project. Um, these, this data that comes out of the baselining and the savings then really serves as the basis for the term sheet for an investment from an investor looking at these projects. Once they have good quality data, and they know that there's transparency, consistency, and best practice being carried out, that moves them to be able to close financially and to be able to tell the project team to go ahead with design, construction, and commissioning of the project. Um, once that is done, once the commissioning of the project's done and the investor has confidence that the project has been installed right, that then allows for the drawdown of funds and the beginning of the financial inspection. And one of the critical opportunities that investors tell us that cities have by incorporating a strategic framework based on a standardized methodology is the role of operations, maintenance, and monitoring, and measurement and verification in the servicing of the loan. Right now, investors have to spend a significant amount of money servicing their loans in order to make sure that the loans are actually, that the projects that the loans have been made for are actually following the practices and are delivering on the energy efficiency being carried out. And investors tell us that cities, they bring about strong measurement and verification parts of their program within their jurisdictions can actually save significant amount of money for project developers, the cities themselves, and the investors by really developing the groundwork for strong loan servicing um, through their measurement and verification program. This in turn attracts investors to those jurisdictions as it'll make it easier for their investment. And so that last critical piece of the three pillars of consistency and transparency 
And trustworthiness is that trustworthiness piece. And having strong measurement and verification. And this is one of the main missing areas that we see in projects and in programs around the world for energy efficiency is a lack of strong measurement and verification. So we all put up all of our work in the upfront piece of training auditors and training developers and focus on the right software to project deem savings for a project and commissioning a project. But then we seem to fall down when it comes to actually measuring, having strong measurement and verification protocols for projects. And what investors tell us is they need to be sold projects that are based on data that's going to be collected through a robust measurement and verification process. It's not enough to tell them that this project is going to save 30% compared to baseline or compared to the baseline of the code. They want to know what the measurement and verification protocol is going to be to be able to show them that that 30% is actually being saved. That in turn will reduce their risk on investing in the project and therefore increase their confidence in that project and the city that's bringing that project forward. And so ultimately, we come back to the set of project documentation. And just think, any of you that are involved in the green building space, there's no way that you would go into a CFO's office and you would push and for a lead project or a bream project, you would push a whole set of documents across the table to the CFO and say, here's your 30% building. We'd like you to move forward on it now. No, in fact, what you would do is you would say, we're not going to get into the details of the standards that we're going to use on this project, but we're going to get a lead certification or we're going to get a bream certification. And this is what investors are looking for. Investors became investors because they're interested in investment, not because they're interested in energy efficiency. And so while they may be interested in investing in energy efficiency, ultimately they look for tools that can be used to be able to reduce their transaction costs in reviewing energy efficiency projects. And so while they want to know that a city has set up a process that brings trustworthiness, transparency, and consistency to the projects that are being developed, they really want to see that all wrapped up into some sort of a certification or a label that tells them that a project has those attributes. And so when we look at what investors have told us they want to invest in energy efficiency projects, it really comes down to the following specific details. And this should really represent the, the framework upon which cities can base their project development process or their project development programs. They want to know that cities are using the best practices for renovation and new projects. They're interested in knowing about the qualifications of all of the professionals that are using a project from the baselining of the project to who's going to do the measurement and verification. They would like third party measurement and verification on projects in order to reduce their own servicing. And they would like to see consistent documentation and a project label that represents all of these components and can follow along the investment life cycle of the project so that it goes from investor to investor that label can speak to all of these qualities being carried out. And so this is what investors tell us they need in order to invest in building energy efficiency projects. And so we're going to give you um, one example of what that could actually look like. Because you as a city could go ahead and, uh, and adopt this all on your own and go through the process of developing such a standardized framework uh, for your city to be able to deliver this. Um, and you could go through the investment of what that would take and train the stakeholders within your local jurisdiction in order to, to meet this. Um, but that's going to be very expensive. Um, it's going to involve a lot of stakeholder engagement and you need to make the right choices um, so investors will be interested in. So you're going to have to be reaching out to investors to make sure that what you're doing is actually what they're interested in. Um, but we're going to show you an example 
of uh, how you can carry this out based on uh, work that people have already done in order to develop such a framework. And so this is not to say that this is the best framework that's out there um, or the only framework that's out there, but it's an example of a framework that can be easily adopted by cities to respond to everything that we've covered so far in this webinar and to give investors what they say they're looking for in order to attract capital to your city and your project. And so I'm going to tell you a bit about our work at the Investor Confidence Project and how we've responded to things that I've told you so far and what investors tell us they want. Um, in order to respond to this desire for transparency, consistency, and trustworthiness from projects, uh, we developed a tool. We developed a certification for building energy renovation projects uh, that really clearly lays out uh, the qualities of trustworthiness, transparency, and consistency, and is based on best practices already being used within the marketplace and independent verification of project results. Um, we have done this in such a way that we're able to uh, have an international certification for projects, but we base it on national standards already used within a marketplace. So we're not creating any new standards or any new processes for a developer or a city to carry out in developing a project. What we do is we look at the best practices and the standards and the, and the certifications for professionals that are already being used within that marketplace. We apply uh, consistent measures for third-party quality assurance um, across the board. And what this allows through consistent documentation is for a developer in Germany to still use German standards and practices, still carry out, still specify uh, the German certifications for professionals, and through third-party quality assurance and consistent documentation be able to reach an international certification that investors are looking for that tells them that that German project has gone through this process. Same for Portugal or Ireland or um, 32 other countries where we we have done research on what the existing standards are within those marketplaces to be able to develop this international approach to national development of projects. And so for the 32 countries that you see um, filled in in blue here, we've, we've now set up a standardized framework where projects and cities can follow this framework to be able to develop an, a project that gets an international certification that speaks to investors and what they're looking for. Um, we've developed this for commercial and institutional or tertiary buildings and for multifamily buildings. So the only area we're not working in is single family residential at this point. And you can think of this certification as a quality mark, like Bream or lead, but instead of certifying a completed building that's being occupied, what we are certifying is we're certifying a proposed building energy project. Because what investors need is investors need a tool to be able to say yes. Investors need a tool to be able to have a project in front of them that they are considering for investment. They like everything that they're hearing, but they need something to tell them, yes, you can have confidence in what is being promised to you, and you can underwrite this project. And so our project, our certification, our Investor Ready Energy Efficiency Certification is just that tool. It tells an investor, you can go ahead and invest in this project and they invest in the project and we go ahead and lead into the performance of that project and then the repaying of this loan. And so a certification like this has benefits to the four major players within the building energy efficiency landscape. For building owners, this sort of certification really gives owners confidence that what ESCOs are selling them can be trusted. And what it allows for the owners of portfolios of buildings, like cities looking at their portfolios and city-owned buildings, or REITs looking at all their private buildings, is consistent documentation, a consistent approach, actually allows them to carry out large-scale building renovations in a way that they can compare projects to each other. 
They can compare developers to each other. They can compare different regions to each other. It allows them to actually be able to compare projects, see outliers, correct for them, and have a consistent development process. For investors, it significantly reduces their transaction costs. Instead of investors having to dig through uh, a city or a developer's technical documentation, they're able to rely upon independent verification and the knowledge that best practices are being used in a project, and that significantly reduces their technical assistance content uh, costs. And because you have consistent project development, it allows for the aggregation of projects. And so whereas before you couldn't combine different projects developed in different ways into portfolios, now you're actually able to do what investors are interested in. Because investors are not interested necessarily in single projects. Many of them are invested in actually investing in the aggregation of portfolios of projects. And this standardization finally allows them to be able to bring together portfolios of consistent projects across borders and across programs. For government programs such as city renovation or city energy efficiency programs, what our certification offers is an internationally recognized off-the-shelf program and project development process that a city can take and immediately implement at no cost based on standards they're already using within their jurisdiction. It makes it significantly easier to train uh, developers within those jurisdictions and city staff because you have consistent approach to the way the projects are going to be developed and it allows the city to be able to start to take some of the costs of project development off of themselves and put it where it rightly belongs which is in the market and so instead of the city having to invest significant resources into quality assurance in each and every project they can rely on the market to provide most of that quality assurance and so the city only has to do a spot check of the projects that come in. This in turn allows the aggregation of projects and the attraction of capital into the city. And lastly, this sort of approach really helps developers. Um, it sends a clear message to developers within a jurisdiction about what a city is looking for and what it's going to take for a project developer to be able to develop a project get approval and get investment. And so we're active currently um, across the United States and major markets in over 31 countries in Europe. Um, we have a training program for project developers and quality assurance agents and we currently have over 500 uh, market actors, ESCOs, government agencies, trade associations, investors who have joined our ally network. And our ally network is very clearly saying, please, we need this sort of standardization if we're able to engage and fully scale up the energy efficiency market that we need in order to meet all of our goals. And the types of approach that we see from the Investor Confidence Project and the Investor Ready Energy Efficiency Certification are exactly what's going to be necessary for us to reach that scale. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, we have an investor network that's waiting to be called by those of you on this call. They have over four and a half billion dollars of financing that is waiting for those of you on this call to call them to be able to access for your projects. Of these 35 investors, over half of them have said, we will offer incentives for anybody that brings an investor ready energy efficiency certified project to us. They will offer expedited underwriting. Some of them guarantee a three to five day underwriting term for certified projects. They'll give preferred terms like lower interest rates, waive insurance fees, and other incentives like that. And so what that should tell you is that is the clearest message yet from investors that if you bring standardized, consistent, transparent and trustworthy projects to them, they're saying that they have such value in that that they will turn around and give that value back to you as cities and project developers through these sorts of incentives. It's a very clear message from those entities that are most engaged in the space and what they're willing to offer you. So 
to sum up what we've covered today, um, investors are really clearly demanding transparency, consistency, and trustworthiness from the projects that you bring to them. And what this means for you as a city is you need to be developing projects and programs that bring about projects that have a clear and transparent framework based on already existing industry best practices. You need to clearly show investors the types of professionals that are being used on projects, requiring third party and measurement verification on projects, consistent documentation across all of your projects and your programs, and then really having a simplified way to show investors that all of these activities have been carried out on a project. And so what simply investors are asking from cities is that you develop standardized mechanisms for implementation of project and project financing that will reap significant benefits for you as a city and really put you above others for attracting capital to your jurisdiction. So we, the Investor Confidence, would be happy to help you with that. Um, as some future potential uh, BEA finance webinars that we're looking at um, that we can carry out is how to design a program that attracts investors, um, how to build finance capacity within your own city staff, um, how to train a workforce of private developers within your jurisdiction about delivering bankable projects, and financing frameworks that actually work that we see out in the, in the marketplace and we can bring in experts to talk to you about that. So here are some of the webinars that we're thinking about over the coming year, year or two. And we'd be interested if there's any that you as practitioners in this space would like to see us focus on and deliver as well. And so with that, I'm going to end my presentation. Um, but I would just say, um, if you'd like to work with us, here is our website. It's eeenergyefficiencyperformance.org and our contact information, and we'd be happy to talk to you about um, anything you've heard in this presentation um, or anything that we do at the Investor Confidence Project. So thank you very much uh, to the BEA and the Copenhagen Center, and I'm gonna throw it back over to Aris right now to lead us through the uh, question and answer period. So thank you for the opportunity to talk to you and hopefully for the opportunity uh, to work with you. Thank you very much, Parama. Uh, now we're about to start the question and answer uh, session. We received a lot of questions, Parama, and uh, so let's start immediately. Uh, the first question is uh, for Parama. Uh, are the protocols that have been developed appropriate for publicly uh, owned buildings? Are there, are there unique considerations that need to be addressed to finance public building retrofit projects? So uh, the protocols that have been developed are um, at the Investor Confidence Project anyway are completely appropriate for uh, public building uh, projects. Um, we focus on the technical side of the financial arrangement so that what we're covering is really all of the technical details that lead into the project development. This fits with any kind of financial arrangement, whether it's self-funded, whether it's um, off the balance sheet funding, uh, whether it's ESCO funding, uh, whether it's grants or financing, it doesn't matter necessarily what the financial arrangement is or the contract arrangement is. Um, the protocols that have been developed by us anyway um, cover the technical aspect and can be used with any one of those. Um, when you are looking at the financing of a public building, uh, there are some differences um, than, than private building. Um, public buildings have a certain benefit over private buildings because there is some greater confidence from investors that, uh, that those buildings um, aren't going away um, and those owners aren't going away. The cities or the uh, special districts are going to be there and are going to be on the hook for developing uh, those projects. Um, what the investors really want to see though from public agencies and where projects normally fall down is they want to really look into the creditworthiness 
of cities. And so it's very critical that cities um, and public agencies have the credit worthiness of the cities uh, figured out and shaped up uh, before they go to investors. Because that's the number one thing that investors tell us as they run into problems with public, uh, public building projects is this lack of credit worthiness um, when looking to invest in those projects. Thank you very much, Parama. Uh, the next question is for Shannon. And uh, the question is, uh, is, the, is the building energy accelerator encouraging the cities it engages with to use this certification framework? Thank you. Um, the building efficiency accelerator doesn't uh, push just one particular certification framework, but it's more a process of providing information um, and training materials on all of them and helping cities to identify which certification programs are right for them. So in this case, certainly uh, this framework is one that we, um, one that we uh, approve of and, and encourage cities to use. Yes, we do encourage that. Um, and we hope to work with cities to help them find which options um, and actions make sense for their where they're at in their building efficiency uh, policy and project um, stage. Thank you very much, Shannon. Uh, Panama, the next question is for you. Uh, can these certification protocols be used in other countries than those you have already worked in? Are there unique considerations that need to be addressed to finance projects in the global south? So um, they can be used. Um, and I just want to follow up on the question that went to Shannon as well, is that, um, as I said in my presentation, you know, our, our approach is but one approach that can be taken here. And so um, we're not here to say that necessarily this is the only approach or the right approach, but we've spent six years talking to investors and trying to respond to the types of questions and requests that investors have given us, and we've developed this approach. And so we're happy to work with anybody that's interested in it and happy it's a completely open source approach. And so what we've developed can be taken and adjusted as well within their market. We think it's better to work with us and have us help you adjust it, but um, do that what you may. And so um, outside of the 32 countries that we mentioned, we just haven't done the research on what the existing standards and certifications are, um, but we've developed a process by which um, cities and countries can go through with us to be able to identify those so that these protocols can be used in those countries. This process takes about uh, an hour to two hours of desk work and then about two conference calls of about an hour to go over the information um, so that we can then start to be able to use these protocols within other jurisdictions and so we'd be happy to work with any jurisdiction that wants to um, that wants to try to make uh, these protocols and the certification applicable to their marketplace um, for the global south um, the the only um, consideration I would say is I would go back to um, the credit worthiness aspect and that's not just the global south I mean that is all over the world the number one thing that investors are going to look at is credit worthiness um, and so they're not going to care uh, if you're in the global south the north Antarctica the Arctic they want to look at the credit worthiness of a project and then whether a project um, that's been developed is consistent, transparent, and trustworthy. That's what they're going to want to look at, and so they're going to want to they're going to want to rely upon independent verification and measurement and verification in order to be able to have confidence that a project is going to be carried out. If they have um, those commitments within a project, that should deal with any kind of the lack of confidence they might have, depending on where that jurisdiction may be located. Thank you, Parama. Uh, another question is, does the technical documentation required by investors vary significantly from one institution, institution to the other or from one country to another? 
Um, the, the, the short answer is no. Um, right now, in the energy efficiency marketplace, what investors see is basically a bowl of jelly beans. Um, they basically see thousands of different approaches brought to them right now. And so no investor is so large that they're able to send out a clear signal to the marketplace about here is the way that I demand all projects be developed in order to get my investment because they would never get projects and they would never be able to invest. They are not big enough. No individual investor is big enough to be able to demand that. No individual developer is big enough to be able to try to become the approach for project development. And so what you have is you have interested parties, such as investors looking for energy efficiency projects, having to just deal with what comes to them in order to get any projects at all. And so because nobody has the scale to be able to try to try to lay out what a consistent and standardized process would be, that's why it opens it up for organizations such as Investor Confidence Project or BEA or the Copenhagen Center to be able to be an independent neutral party to say, you know, let's look at what the best practices are and let's try to talk to investors, to cities and developers and be able to lay out a consistent process. Um, so that we can have enough agreement across the marketplace um, to be able to help um, all of the market players. So at this point, if investors want projects, um, unfortunately, they can't be um, all that aggressive on demanding that the projects be brought to them in a certain way. Thank you, Panama. Uh, the next question is, again, for you, and it's, what are the time-tested policy tools by using those the governments can streamline the investors, particularly the private sector, plans and projects to follow energy efficiency best practices and for green buildings? Yeah, so what investors told us um, through about six years of work as well as the in-depth work of the BEA's finance work group is, is four major things um, that they look for. Um, they look for a strong political commitment from the leadership of the city. So they wanna see that the leadership of the city is actually committed to energy efficiency um, and green building. This can be carried out through policy documents, through policies that are adopted, through training programs, through the number of staff that are committed um, to, uh, to energy efficiency uh, programs. Um, they want to see a standardized framework for project development um, as we've covered. Um, they want to see that a city is invested in strong capacity building uh, both for city staff as well as for um, owners and developers that are active uh, within their uh, jurisdiction. And then they want to see um, whether or not a city has uh, put in place um, a strong uh, program uh, for financing and whether or not they've aligned uh, their program with what financiers are looking for um, and be able to articulate that to developers um, as well. And so the number one issue um, that they look at well, whether or not a city is expressing the type of leadership that they want is really that, that political piece and being able to show that they're committed to energy efficiency and green building. Thank you. And uh, uh, another question is, Panama, uh, the problem is that you want to define building energy efficiency while buildings do not consume energy. The, res the residents of the buildings consume the energy. Why do we not classify the projects by the investment criteria, not the consumer? Uh, great question. Um, and ultimately, as the questioner suggests, the success of a building energy project is going to be completely reliant upon the behavior of the occupants of the building, as well as the management of the occupants of the building. And this 
is actually one of the areas where we see around the world the least amount of work um, by developers developing projects, by cities developing programs um, and projects that are being delivered. There's a lack of focus on the operations, maintenance, and monitoring of that project to make sure the project's actually meeting the goals that it carried out. And so one of the areas that investors tell us they're looking for is it's not enough just to build a good building that's 30% better on day one. What they want to know is they want to know how is that 30% better going to be maintained over time. Exactly how are the operators of these buildings going to be trained in order to be able to run this high performance building? Um, what are the management practices that are going to be put in place for the occupants of the building to educate them um, about this? And then how is the building going to be monitored um, over time on a regular basis in order to be able to show that this is still being met? And so this is one of the key areas of focus that investors tell us that they want to see. And in our own certification, the Investor Ready Energy Efficiency Certification, we actually have templates that we've developed the cities or project developers can use templates for operations, maintenance, and monitoring plans so that you can carry out this sort of uh, management of buildings and the occupants within the buildings. But it's a great question and absolutely the determinant of whether or not a project is ultimately successful or not and is able to repay its financing. Thank you, Panama. And because our time uh is ending. Uh, let's have one last question. Uh, you mentioned that one percent of renovations are being carried out, by, but in some markets, five percent of renovation is being carried out. What are the markets that are getting five percent doing differently? Ah, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I confused folks with that. Um, what I had meant to articulate was that even in the best markets we're only seeing about 1% of buildings being renovated for energy on an annual basis. But for new construction, even in the best market, we're only seeing about 5% of new buildings being built energy efficient in the very best markets. And so the 1% was for renovations and the 5% was for new construction of energy efficiency. Um, that was confusing. Thank you to the questioner for answering it. And I just want to say thank you again um, to the Copenhagen Center and for the Building Efficiency Accelerator for hosting uh, this event. And if any of you would like to work with us, just go to eeperformance.org and um, we'll be happy to uh, set up a call with you to uh, help you with your projects and help you with your programs. Back to you, Aris. Thank you very much, Panama. Uh, unfortunately, we'll have to end the webinar because we are running, uh, we're running it more than an hour. And uh, I know there are many questions that we weren't able to answer it. Uh, the, answer will be, the, the questions will be forward to our panelists. And uh, I hope they will be able to answer to you. So Absolutely. I would like the attendees that uh, joined our webinar, the panelists for the presentations, and I wish to everybody good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are, and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Thanks, everyone.